Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're at the new Rad Power Bikes headquarters in Seattle, Washington. I'm with the commercial sales director. This is Brian. How's it going, man? Good, how are you? Dude, awesome. The last time we looked at the Rad Burrow, it was like brand new. It had just launched and it's really been fine-tuned for 2019. That's when yeah. we're, we're shooting this. And we were talking about all these cool use cases. I think originally I was looking at this thing and it was like, yeah, maybe you're like a food truck delivery guy or, you, you know, maybe you're trucking people around with the pedicab, but it sounds like there are all these really cool use cases that have come up. Uh, one of which it was like up in Burnaby, Canada, someone, some, what, what was that one? Can you remind me? Yeah, the Burnaby Public Library bought it and they adapted it to use it as a mobile library. So kind of think of a bookmobile, except electrified and sustainable and more nimble. They're able to take it into parks and use it to connect with the community. Uh, they hook it up with Wi-Fi so that people can log on with their tablets. They can check out books. They use it to take uh, science projects to local schools and stuff like that. that so, is so yeah, cool. it's pretty neat. And then, you know, bike balancing is another one that to me was really cool because it's like, first of all, if you're a, a ride share program with bikes or even scooters, you're trying to go sustainable. Right. And then, but if you're using a truck to pick them up or something versus something like this, you could actually, t what is like eight to ten little scooters could be tossed into the back of that thing. Yep, absolutely. And in most cases, they'll actually use it with the truck bed rather than the cargo box. Oh. Uh, so whether you're hauling kegs or you're hauling scooters, the flexibility of that truck bed is, is tough to beat. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of the scooter share companies, the bike share companies, they'll use it to rebalance their fleets, to pick up scooters, take them back to home base to charge. And they find that when people leave the scooters or leave the bikes on a bike path or on, you know, in the middle of a park, it's tough to access them with the with the trucks and the vans. So having the flexibility of the Radboro really uh, is an operational efficiency uh, improvement for them. And then also um, it, it lets them be more sustainable and more true to, to kind of, um, uh, the overall message of the business. Yeah, the values. And I was looking at this one. This is, what do you call this one? It's the box? This the, is the cargo box. The cargo box. Yep. And I was like, I wonder if they've got any jungle cats back here. Because apparently that's a popular use case too, like zoos and... Zoos and, and university campuses. Yes. Yeah, so they're using these to replace gas-powered cargo vehicles on campus. Uh, to, you know, for their um, campus maintenance teams to get around, their facilities maintenance teams to get around. Yeah, it's something that's quiet, it's not polluting. Um, uh, so it doesn't interrupt, you know, whether it's your student body trying to, you know, have a, a contemplative uh, university experience <laughs> yeah. uh, or at the zoo where they're trying to have a natural Spooking experience. Spooking the animals. So, yeah. And yeah, if you're walking around, I think originally it was like, yeah, you can go 20 miles per hour, but that can actually be lowered That's by right. the end user, Yeah, which yeah. is so cool. So our improved software for 2019 uh, includes the ability to reduce that top speed. So if you're using it on a university campus with a lot of pedestrians, lowering that top speed is a really important feature. Um, and then we also are able to adjust uh, the throttle sensitivity so that it can ramp up either quickly if you're sharing the road with cars uh, or much more gently if you're using it in pedestrian zones. Beautiful. It really feels like, you know, this is like finding the product fit Initially, I was looking at this and I was like, am, is, am I supposed to get that? Is this consumer grade? And, and the message was like, no, like this, there are trikes out there, electric trikes. Th this is more like a utility vehicle type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. With its uh, cargo hauling capacity and especially with the torque that you have on demand, um, it, it's intended for business applications and for cargo hauling applications where you're hauling hundreds of pounds of cargo uh, at a time. I appreciate that, you know, and yeah, it sounded like, you know, I was talking to these guys before the review and just trying to brush up because it really uses a lot of parts that are unique to me. Like I've got all the specs at the website, but it's just, it's in a different class. So this is not like consumer level stuff. In fact, I think you have to get a couple. There's like a minimum order quantity, right? Yeah. Uh, I think the other piece that was really uh, interesting to me is that, you know, it's very, like, look at this, that, that's the Radboro, that's Radboro, so is this. So the, the base platform is $57.99, that's right. but depending on, you know, what, what part you want, and apparently people will get multiple like add-ons. Is that what you? Yep, that's right. So depending on your configuration, depending on the attachment that you order it with, uh, it goes from between $57.99 uh, to $7,000 uh, when configured with the cargo box. 
all of the attachments are modular, they're interchangeable. I'd say about a third of my customers will buy it with more than one attachment, and that way they can swap them back and forth as needed. So you may get somebody that buys it with a cargo box to haul parcels Monday through Friday, and then they'll throw a pedicab on on the weekends and use it uh, you know, around the stadium district on Saturdays and Sundays, things like that. Oh, I got a secret for you guys. When I was picked up at the hotel, that guy showed up in that pedicab equipped Radboro, and it was, it was rad, it was really awesome. Thank you so much for just giving me a little overview before we jump into the, the technical specs. It was awesome, Brian. Absolutely, thanks, Court. Okay, we sent Brian packing back inside and now we can really look at these things and, and get close on the details. We've even been able to tip the pedicab attachment back so you can see like the controller box, the battery, everything. Uh, I just wanna start out by, you know, explaining like the weight on these things. They're a little bit heavier than a traditional bicycle or electric bicycle. It's like 227 pounds and that's without any attachments. The truck bed attachment is one of the lighter ones, like 50 pounds. This one's like 120, 140. So if we look down at this disc brake right here, this is a hydraulic disc brake with an extra thick tubing, an extra thick rotor, seven inch rotor right there. And then look at this fork double crown it doesn't have a traditional stem it like the handlebar mounts directly to it and it's really beefy same thing with these brake levers and they've got those little locks there like a parking brake so you pull it in and then push that and it keeps the bike from rolling away but then when we come back to some of the bicycle stuff I and mean, this is a velo plush saddle even has a little handle on the bottom you wouldn't want to try to lift the whole thing but sometimes you kind of got to reposition the front of the bike and because it's using a standard 27.2 millimeter seat post you can actually swap that out for the Suntour NCX, which is a suspension seat post that Rad sells for some of their other bikes. So it's kind of cool to see like a little bit of overlap, things that are familiar to me as a bike enthusiast and parts that, you know, you could swap out that saddle if you wanted something a little bit bigger or maybe a little bit sporty, a little bit narrower. This is a good choice though for kind of all around. We've got these large aluminum alloy platform pedals with pins, pro wheel, 170 millimeter crank arms, and we've got this chain guide aluminum alloy on both sides so the chain's not going to fall off quite as easily and i like that the chain isn't super super long sometimes on trikes for recumbents and stuff you'll see a chain that goes way back to like a, an axle that connects both of the rear wheels and then the chain is just really loose you can see this one's still got a little bit of bounce into it but this is this is decent this is more standard what i'd be used to seeing on a, a regular bike and i think that makes the drivetrain work a little bit better this is a shimano altis derailleur one step up from entry level on the shimano line but pretty durable pretty reliable 11 to 34 tooth DNP nickel plated cassette seven speed so that's that's decent you know it gives you a good amount of range you see how the lowest gear is really wide that's going to make it easier to start and climb and still given the weight of this thing over 200 pounds without any kind of accessory attachment on the back you you really do rely on that motor so having a motor that what they told me is you know 750 watts it can kind of be adjusted that's part of the whole you know fleet manager thing you can set up maybe like a limited top speed if if it's someone who you know has these things going around a zoo or carrying heavy equipment and you do, you just don't want it to get out of control you can lower that top speed and kind of lock it out um, alternatively if you're someone who's doing pedicab and you're like hey I want to keep up with cars or maybe you know delivery and you're like I'm going in and out of traffic I want to be able to hold my own and not be creating a huge traffic jam up to 20 miles per hour so a minute ago I mentioned you know, the motor 750 watt nominal. Originally, they kind of did that and specified it because that was the maximum that you could do for like a class one, class two electric bicycle. But it peaks potentially higher than that and you can adjust it now, especially with use on private property. It sounds like, you know, 1,000, 1,500 watts or something. And I don't want to take people too off track. The big takeaway here is with 250 newton meters of torque, it's very capable and then they have instead of a single rear axle, there's like a differential. So you do have kind of like a two wheel drive setup. It, it, and can you explain this part to me a little bit more, Corey? So like, how does the motor interact with the rear wheels? Yeah, so basically the motor is a built in transaxle system. And so the power is gonna be able to be applied to both wheels as you're going around corners. And of course the outside wheel is making a longer path than the inner wheel. That's it, yeah. So the differential means you're not gonna be like, kind of wrecking the tread on one tire or having it feel kind of like like the two sides are fighting each other exactly so it's going to be smooth around tight corners that is so unique like i i really haven't seen any other electric trikes or 
you know, again, we, we're kind of in this different category here where technically it is an electric bicycle. It has pedals, it has gears and everything, but it's a more industrial, like commercial grade. And you can see on the back, same thing with those really powerful hydraulic disc brakes on both sides. It's not like the motor is only powering one wheel like a lot of other trikes. It's powering both. It's got that differential. You've got these extra thick, like again, motor motorcycle grade rims and spokes that can handle a lot of extra weight plastic fenders and they're a little bit thicker they aren't as flexible as some of the plastic fenders i see on on other products fairly wide too so they can help to keep you dry um, with these extra wide kenda tires i was trying to find the the specs here 2.5 by 17 so 17 that's another unique size i'm used to seeing 20 24 26 28 17 is is kind of unique but with a, a taller tire and one that's extra thick uh tends to be pretty sturdy with extra weight on a bike like this you don't want to get flats can you tell me anything else about these tires like in terms of getting flats because they're more like a motorcycle tire definitely a lot more like a motorcycle tire um, which is great for a utility purpose like this carrying that extra cargo it's important to have something that has a really stiff and robust sidewall yeah and so we actually use a six ply tire which just means that there's more rubber material baked into the sidewall of the tire yeah. and that increases stiffness and just helps to increase the load capacity of the tire Excellent, excellent. And then the frame itself, part of the reason it weighs a little bit more is because it's steel, not aluminum alloy like most of your other bikes. Definitely, and so that helps with uh, with rigidity. We've also made a number of changes to the gusseting on the frame. Let's check that out. 2019, so we've increased the thickness of this frame member uh, up to 80 millimeters and then added a number of gussets throughout the frame to really help uh, ensure that you get a really, really stable ride. Yeah, because frame flex can be an issue and you know imagine all there's this weight back here and you're really cranking on it there is more weight with this suspension fork and wheel and you can kind of get some twisting or bouncy feelings on some of the other step throughs that I've tried but you still want it to be approachable right like you, you really can't swing your leg around and over the back of this bike and most of these because you've got the, the box attachments or whatever so being able to step over is really nice. One of the things I do for the reviews is measure like the minimum, you know, is this like stand over height, minimum saddle height, some of those other adjustments. Um, Corey, can you tell me about this right here, this locking component? Yeah, so we have a parking lock cylinder. So basically you're able to rotate the front fork and then lock it, um, which is great if you're running into a shop making a delivery or something like that, just to prevent uh, a theft of convenience. Yeah, yeah, I'm used to like, you know, motorcycles and things kind of have a key to start it. And with this, you've, you've just sort of got this like M button that turns it on, but there's also like a password option in the display, isn't there? Correct, yeah, you can select a, a password. So you would basically power on the display and then enter a four digit password uh, before being able to apply power. So a couple little things that just make it, you know, um, imagine you have a small business or maybe it's the library book thing and you've got some volunteers and then they go out there and start messing with it and potentially taking off. That way, you know, it's, it's nice to have those security features uh, baked in in just the right amount, I would say. So it's it's really bridging that gap, like I keep coming back to. Was this a 48 tooth chain ring up here? It is. Yeah, so, you know, they've dialed this in so that the, the pedaling is pretty comfortable, but also capable. If you really had to pedal this, if it was out of juice, have you done that very much, Corey? Uh, of course, we got to try everything. Yeah. <laughs> How did that feel to you? Uh, it's definitely possible, and with the really wide range seven speed freewheel, um, it makes it very possible. Okay, cool. I haven't tried that yet. I'm going to do that later on the um, the test ride, but it's it's nice to get your feedback. Um, and then the fact that this tilts forward, I would love to see in this box again, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. So this is like the controller unit. And for charging, see how they have this retractable cord right here? So this is just, I don't know if that's the, the NEMA 515 or whatever standard wall plug. Standard wall plug, exactly. And we're in the States here and then it just kind of goes back in and then maybe this is a controller. Yes, yeah, so we have our controller here, our charger here, and then the charge reel, as well as a battery uh, state of charge indicator. So this just gives you kind of a rough idea. If you're charging overnight, you'll know when it's at 100%, yeah. as well as a battery display on the dis display. And then that's the battery itself. And it's using the same, uh, what is that, lithium? Um, nickel cobalt nickel aluminum cobalt. oxide. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I am always just like lithium ion, but you know, they are using higher grade. Do you, what cells do you use, what brands? They're Samsung 35E. I thought that might be it. Yeah, the Samsung, so they're high capacity cells, really reliable, name brand, and it's 48 volts and two and a half kilowatt hours. So it's like 52.5 watt hours. Uh, amp hours, uh, yeah. Amp hours and oh yeah, because you multiply it 48 times 52.5 and then that gets you your, I think 
2,520 watt hours. Exactly. You Hooray! <laughs> okay, a lot of numbers with this one. That battery is removable too. So yeah, you know, I'm again, I'm kind of like straddling this concept of a motorcycle where there are little stores that you go to. This is light enough, and if you take the battery off, you can kind of perform some of the maintenance yourself. Definitely. Um, local bike shops are able to help out in a lot of cases with the drivetrain components because they are bicycle standard. Yeah. Um, and then for any time you would need to take it somewhere to be serviced, uh, lifting it into the back of a Sprinter van or into a pickup truck with just a couple of people isn't out of the question. Thank you. Okay. And again, this is more of like commercial grade type of thing. So you probably have a couple and then you've got support with them and they've kind of got like another, a little team that supports this commercial part of their, their company. So yeah, it, for me, it's a real privilege to get to look at this thing and to scope out some of these special parts. Like there's a little uh, support arm right there that keeps the, the trailer portion up and you've got a chain cover here so it's not gonna be bouncing around as much. The battery box being removable. If you did maybe need to hot swap and have multiple batteries just standing by so you could keep the unit going Definitely. nonstop. Yep, it's just a couple of connectors and then a quick draw latch and then you're able to swap in a new battery pack. Okay, very cool, very cool. One of my really important considerations whenever I'm looking at an electric bike or anything really even cars is comfort so I love that they had the suspension fork here it's, it's not super adjustable it doesn't have lockout but it's really it's just smooth it's kind of a you know it takes the edge off of things and if you are riding like high high rates like longer periods of time going back and forth back and forth having that suspension fork is is such a big deal for me personally and it's something I've seen other pedicab riders sometimes they don't have can you do some branding and things with people or how does that work if they want to like skin these? Yeah, with the cargo box in particular, there's obviously a uh, big demand for uh, wrapping it. And so uh, we've worked with various companies on uh, vinyl wrapping these products. Very cool. And then on the other side, there's like this draw door thing. So you can kind of raise it or lower it. Would that be like someone inside there working out of it, like a food truck? Was that one of the concepts or? Uh, not as much someone working inside, but for quick access, we have a roll up door on the side and we also have options with a, a kind of traditional swinging door on the rear. And so basically just different options to get your packages out. Sweet, okay. Well, and you know, they've got a bunch of different videos that show the use cases and they're really polished sort of marketing, but from a like exploration standpoint, you'll come up here and check out the wrapped wires. I think they handled this really well. A nice headlight that does have like an on off physical switch. It's as actually a dimmer, ambient light dimmer switch. Oh, is it an ambient mm -hmm. light dimmer switch? Okay, we were looking at the other bike earlier. Does that one have an on off switch or is yes. it the same thing? Yeah, that one has an on off. This is an ambient light sensor. So would that mean you could leave it on at all times and then the light just comes on if it gets dark outside? It basically adjusts the brightness when your sense or when your headlight is switched to be on. Okay. And then the, the horn is where I was going next. So it's got kind of an electronic chirp. I wanted to turn it on and maybe see what that sounds like real quick. So the on off switch is right over here. Is there another physical on off switch that people can? There is a breaker on the battery pack. Uh, so if you're storing it for longer periods of time, you can shut the battery completely off. And that's also a nice kind of uh, discreet secondary switch yeah. to again prevent. I hope we're not giving away the secret. <laughs> I think it's on right now. So if we just press the M button over there, it boots up, says Rad Power Bikes. We've got this nice little display down here. And then if we wanted to do the headlight, I think it's just this button right here. Yep. So just press the, yeah, beautiful, okay. Got the headlight going. It's pretty nice. It looks like it has a couple of beams. And then the horn. Can you can you do that real quick? Yep, also on the light control. Oh yeah. <laughs> there it is. The horn. And then blinkers. That was something that was kind of unique. I remember from the past. So people kind of know what's going on back here and they can get a get around you. You can ride a little bit more safely. A lot of little a lot of little attention to detail. Okay, that's all on the left. And then on the right we have the different levels of assist. So we can go down to zero. And this one has a full grip twist throttle. So that's very much like motorcycle style. And there's an on off button for that. Is that right? Correct. Yep. So you could disable that if you wanted to go pure pedal assist. Okay, great. Let's see here. I'm, uh, I guess I wanna take it all the way up. Highest level of assist. We've got five right there. We've got odometer, clock. And then I think if I tap that M button, uh, we cycle through. So we've got like a different speed readout. Odometer. That might be kind of it. I guess RT speed, what does that stand for, Corey? Let's see, RT, uh, real time. Real time speed. It just seems to blink. Are there any other like interesting things you can show me about the display? Yeah, so to enable reverse, uh, you would hold down the down arrow oh. for a few seconds. Let's see. There we go. And then it'll hop into reverse, so it just looks like I switched it back. Um, 
and then you use the throttle still so you have that power. variable speed okay well, great i remember uh testing it last time and i i just i love that you've got you're thinking about the the driver here you've got the bottle cage bosses up front so they can reach down you, you, it's not really clear you know, there, there's a variable back here, like what's going to be behind you and taking care of the passengers is one thing, but, but really keeping that driver in control and safe. Do you see a lot of people putting like mirrors on the side or anything to, to look, so, look yeah, around? Yes. It'll actually yes. Have standard uh, motorcycle mirrors. So mounted onto the brake levers. Perfect. Yeah. It gives you a way to like see around potentially. Have you tried them with the, with the bigger box? Yep. And work they do right? what you see around the sides. Okay, cool. Cool. For me, this is a bit of like a, a learning experience and um, I, I noticed this is maybe so you don't get hung up. Like if you're close to a wall and you don't have a box attachment, it just pushes out. Reminds me of like pre-runners and stuff. They've got those like rock sliders and things that just kind of help you out. So it's nice to see that as well. Um, I get the impression that, you know, again, being like a commercial type of a vehicle, there are cities that are like shutting down certain areas of the streets, the zoo application, the university. I. I'm really excited to see this type of vehicle making it to market and there's not a whole lot to compare it to. So as much as I'm trying to kind of review and talk about the pros and cons, it's sort of in a class of its own right now, unless you were trying to build something like this, which there's, there's so much nuance and they've picked the right parts and they've just dialed it in. I feel like, you know, we've, we've done a good job looking at it. I might just want to hop on and take a ride. Is there anything you feel like maybe we haven't covered? I think you've covered it all pretty okay. good. Well, thank you for your help, Corey. I really appreciate it. And before we get, get on the bikes, I just want to like show you guys the inside of this truck bed and just, you know, wiggle this thing around. Really feels solid. I'm seeing like the rubber move, but we were talking about the frame earlier. It's just, yeah. I th the last time I rode this bike, I remember it feeling like a little bit less stiff in this region. And I feel like that's been improved a whole lot. And then the big box. It sounds like this is one of your most popular accessories right here so that's kind of fun i want to look inside one more time with this nice handle back here sweet the big door and then the, the price is 57.99 is without an attachment and then it goes all the way up to 69.99 for the uh, large cargo box okay so that's the most expensive one is there one more configuration we don't see out here right now uh, there is. We also have a flatbed attachment, which is very similar to the truck bed, just without the sidewalls. Yeah, and that's probably the lightest one then, right? Okay, cool. Great. Let's do it. Awesome. Okay, so the bike that makes the most sense to ride together is the pedicab. And we were looking at this a minute ago. I think it's it's great. You know, you've got that storage space down there. And Corey, can you tip this forward again? Yeah, it's got these nice little handles. Cool. Buckles. Yeah. What? Perfect. So I'm just going to hop on this thing. Is that all right? Yeah. You got the nice shady spot right here. Do you have any other uh, additional like canopy options or shields or anything like that? This is our current offering. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. So he's hopping on. He's unlocked both brakes. The bike is powered up. And then there's the seven speed. It's kind of a big thumb shifter there on the right. And, you know, on traditional bikes, I've called out like little trigger shifters that are kind of fun and quick. But this is it leaves enough room for that big throttle, the on-off switch, and that reservoir for the hydraulic disc brake lever on the right, which does have this big ball end, so that's another motorcycle type of a component. See that suspension fork doing stop job up there. Right down there, there's like a 12 magnet cadence sensor. So as Corey pedals, it passes by the little uh, electrical sensor and it sends a signal back to the motor. It's, they, they smooth it out a little bit, so the bike feels kind of natural and predictable. For, for as powerful as that motor is, that canister motor, it's, it gives you a sense of control that's, that's nice. It's not like bucking you around. <laughs> there we go. Kicking it into gear. <laughs> that this is more like a hub motor in the sense that it's not like you have to shift to a higher gear to get a higher speed. The motor just does its own thing. It's really, it's dependent on the level of assist or how far you're twisting that throttle, which in a way is kind of nice. I mean, I think you could you could break the chain on this and it would still go under throttle power. Exactly. Which is nice. So in, in a way it's industrial that way too. And I just, I love the two wheel drive uh, in the rear, how that's set up, the differential.
even the hub spacing up front is a little bit different. There's like that axle that goes through and it's got the big nuts at the end. It's stuff that I'm not used to seeing, but you can, you can really start to appreciate it when you think about the weight and the forces involved with a bike like this. Do you mind if we swap out in like a nice neighborhood over here? I can give it a try. There's those smooth brakes. Sweet. Looks like quite the adventure mobile over there. <laughs> Thank you, whoa. Nice parking job. You gonna reverse it real quick? Sure thing. I wanna check this out. He's like a pro driver here. Nice. That is, it's so nimble. It's, it's like a really cool hybrid. You don't have to get like a little gas powered golf cart or one of those little, and, and it's more affordable than that too. You know, the, the weight savings, the efficiency there. I just love that. Okay, so I'm gonna hop on. Here we go. We're in assist level five. I might take it down a little bit. So I'm gonna do that just so we don't get out of control. Unlock the left. Unlock the right. Just gonna start twisting. Check over the shoulder. There we go. Now I'm starting off with the twist throttle, but I'm gonna let go of that. And now it's pedal assist. A little bit of a delay there, but that's to be expected with kind of a cadence sensor. It's nice that it has 12 magnets. Um, that's like a higher resolution than some of the other ones. Uh, it used to be like six magnets. Shift gears. Okay, now I told you guys I would do this without any assistance. And that's what I, oh, wait, wait. Take it all the way down to zero and pedal. And pedal, and pedal, and pedal. Yeah, it's nice to have a motor, <laughs> but it is possible. This is me moving Corey's weight plus that little pedicab. And th this is not flat. This is a little bit of an incline back here. A slight hill, yeah. And that's all me. Rock on, right? Okay, now let's get back to it. Here's the twist throttle in action. Nice and smooth, ramping up. 10 miles per hour. Very nice. I'm gonna do the little horn from up here. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna bring us over this nice little area. Make sure you watch the curb, you know, if you're, you're riding something like this. Ah. Very cool to get to check this out. Corey, thank you so much for your, your help. And then, you know, shout out to Brian as well. I hope this helps you guys out. I realize that probably the majority of watchers on the channel are kind of like just a consumer, like for fun, uh, for recreation. And, and this is a little bit more like utility commercial, but it's still really neat. And it, it gives me some like inspiration for what could be done with e-bikes in the future. For the full written review on this, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com, which of course has all the specs. These guys have the marketing videos where they interview the person who works at the zoo or the library and they talk about how cool this has been for them. Check that out. Uh, I'll try to answer your questions. And again, you know, this is, it's like the two minimum order quantity kind of thing. Uh, I guess that's it. Have fun out there. Ride safe. Love you guys. We'll see you next time.